Why do chilies and mustard feel hot and spicy? Mm. Mm. Oh. Oh. Hi there, my name is Danny Ward and welcome to Knowledgeka. Today we are talking about heat. Not the kind you feel on a hot sunny day, but the kind you eat. Ever wondered why chilies feel spicy? Why does mustard have a kick to it? Let's delve a little deeper. Capsaicin. This is the molecule responsible for why chili peppers feel hot. This also goes by the name of 8-methyl-N-vanillyl-6-nonamide. Not quite as catchy in Italy, but I'm sure the chemists in the audience are having a grand old time. Capsaicin is an oil-like capsaicinoid compound which binds to TRPD1 receptors on the inside of our mouths. These TRPD1 receptors are a class of vanilloid receptor any ideas as to what these detect? Oh, anyone who said vanilla, give yourself a pat on the back. As a condolence for being wrong. Vanilloid receptors actually bind to, well, vanilloids. Never heard of them? Well, before this video, me neither. Vanilloids are compounds such as capsaicin, which possess a vanillyl group. Before we move on, you remember just a few moments ago that I said, Anyone who said that vanilloid receptors bind to vanilla were wrong? Well, that's sort of a lie. A white lie, I might add. A compound known as vanillin does bind to vanilloid receptors as it contains a vanillyl group. It's this vanillin which gives vanilla beans their flavour. Saying vanilla binds to these receptors is a little inaccurate though as vanilla itself contains a lot of compounds which don't bind. Anyway, side tangent over. I hope you're happy with yourselves. Now, back to capsaicin. Capsaicin's vanilla group binds to the TRPV1 receptors, which leads to a sensory neuron activation. And this sends signals to the brain, telling it that something is spicy. The TRPV1 receptors have evolved to detect heat changes in the mouth so we don't eat anything that could hurt us from being too hot. Chili and capsaicin aren't physically hot. They don't lead to an increased temperature, but because capsaicin can still bind to the receptor, it essentially tricks the brain. Chilies may feel hot, but in reality, they are just really good illusion artists. Oh, well, that leads on to the next question then. Why do chilies give the sensation of heat? This is most likely a naturally evolved deterrent against animals like mammals and microbes like fungi. Animals get hungry. Microbes want to grow on things. Chilies are having none of it. Some animals though, such as birds, lack the receptors necessary to be affected by the capsaicin. So don't ever bring these guys to your local curry house. They'll just be showing off, I assure you. Birds eating the chilies though may not be a bad thing as their digestive system helps germination. This means more chili plants once these seeds have been released. So why do some people seem to find happiness with the scorching mouth heat? Well, that's all down to our feel-good friend, dopamine. This signaling neurotransmitter is released into the brain in response to capsaicin in an attempt to block some of the heat. It also happens to, in some people at least, to lead to a almost euphoric state. Now that vindaloo curry sounds a bit more attractive, huh? We measure chili heat in Scoville heat units, or SHUs. This tells us roughly how much capsaicin oil is present in the chili and how hot it will be perceived by the taster. This scale is named after Wilbur Scoville from Bridgeport, Connecticut, USA, who in 1912 created and published a method called the Scoville organoleptic test. This test allowed us to measure piquancy, which basically is just a fancy way of saying spiciness. At the very bottom of the Scoville scale is the bell pepper, not 
spicy at all, ranging from 0 to 100 SHUs. On the very top are the aptly named Carolina Reaper. I'm getting sweaty just thinking about this one. This monstrous chili hits a whopping 1.5 to 2.2 million SHU and is officially the Guinness World Record hottest chili. For comparison, anyone who likes doing fiery challenges and making their tongues hurt, you know all about the heat of the habanero pepper. Now times that by 20. Yeah, I think I'll pass on that one actually. Did you know that chilies can be lethal? Yeah, they can actually kill you. Now, d don't worry. Your next Vindaloo curry won't send you six feet under, but in very high concentrations, as in much hotter than anything your eye-wateringly hot local Indian restaurant will serve up, could have some serious consequences. Ask scientists, we measure how lethal a substance is by testing its LD50. This tells us the amount of a substance which is needed for 50% of the organism population to find this deadly. In the case of capsaicin, it has an LD50 of 188.8 milligrams per kilogram in male mice and just 97.4 milligrams per kilogram in female mice. Obviously, we are much bigger and so we'll need a lot more capsaicin. Estimated for us humans, however, between 0.5 and 5 grams per kilogram. But for obvious reasons, the study didn't actually put this to the test. Didn't get approved by the ethics committee, unsurprisingly. One curious tidbit of information about capsaicin is that ethanol can lower the activation temperature of the capsaicin receptor. Because of this, if you are planning to take on that super hot, extra spicy, eye-watering jumbo chicken wing challenge, probably best to stick to water, or better yet, milk. In fact, it's probably best you don't stick to water. This is because even though a nice splash of ice cold water may give temporarily relief from the heat, the capsaicin oil that gives the chili its fiery kick won't mix with the water. Oil and water don't like each other. So when you guzzle down a glass of cold H2O, you achieve nothing more than spreading that oil around your mouth, which ultimately makes it worse. More neural sensory pathways are stimulated and so your brain freaks out even more. Your mouth just feels 10 times hotter. Not good. So why milk instead? Milk contains a protein known as casein, which binds to capsaicin oil from chili, which gives it the heat. This bound oil can then be easily washed away from the mouth leading to a much cooler palette. Another strategy that some people swear by is good old bread and butter. I've not tried this one personally, but it does seem the kind of thing that might actually work, as the capsaicin oil can dissolve in the butter. Couple the two with a nice glass of milk, and that pesky capsaicin oil doesn't stand a chance. Allyl isothiocyanate is the other major naturally occurring chemical responsible for the feeling of heat when you eat. This is the molecule responsible for that kick you get from mustard, radishes, horseradish or wasabi. In the case of black mustard seeds, when these are broken open, they release a glucosinolate compound called synegrin. This is degraded by a biological catalyst, an enzyme called myrosinase. Synegrin degrades into the allyl isothiocyanate. This allyl isothiocyanate is an organosulfur oil-like compound that binds to the iron channel TRPA1 in the mouth along with the one capsaicin likes, TRPV1. White mustard seeds release a slightly different chemical known as synalbin. Synegrin, synalbin? Whoever came up with these names wasn't too creative, huh? Synalbin degrades to 4 hydroxo benzyl isothiocyanate instead of allyl isothiocyanate. While it may sound bigger, badder, and not out of place from a Breaking Bad script, 4 hydroxy benzyl isothiocyanate is unstable and so 
breaks down really quickly to form hydroxybenzyl alcohol and a thiocyanate iron. These are very weak and don't feel hot, but give more of a tanginess instead. Chef Gordon Ramsay, if you're watching this video, I hope you're proud of me for throwing those culinary description words around. Tanginess, not bad, huh? So, there you have it. Chilies and mustard feel hot because of a sneaky little chemical which tricks our receptors. Do you like the spice? Throw a comment down below. What's the hottest thing you have ever eaten? Thanks for watching today's episode of Knowledge Care. I had a lot of fun learning all about this stuff. I hope you did too. See you next time. Stay hungry for factuality.